apologize in advance, Mr. Attorney General. I'm going to try to go through some questions quickly. Multiple trustworthy reports revealed last week that the Justice Department may require AT&T to sell CNN, among other assets, as a requirement for the approval of its proposed acquisition of Time Warner. Subsequently, more reports have surfaced that Rupert Murdoch, the chairman of 21st Century Fox and a confidant of President Trump, has twice contacted AT&T in an effort to buy CNN. This is, of course, very disturbing to those of us that are responsible for oversight of, uh, of these issues. And my first question is, has any White House employee or official, including the President, contacted the Justice Department regarding the AT&T Time Warner transaction or any other transaction? I'm not able to comment on conversations or communications the Department of Justice top people have with top people at the White House. Well, you, Mr. Chairman, I'd ask the witness be directed to answer the question. You, you, you either you're invoking the Fifth Amendment or you're invoking executive privilege. You just can't decline to answer because it's uncomfortable. So I'd ask Mr. Chairman that the witness be directed to answer my question. Mr. The witness can answer the question in the fashion that he has determined. Um, well, reserving my right, Mr. Chairman, I'll move on. <coughs> Mr. Sessions, are you not going to answer the question? Whether any White House or any White House officials have attempted to interfere or speak to the Justice Department about this transaction? According to long-standing Department of Justice policy, the Department of Justice does not reveal uh, comp uh, privileged conversations okay, I, I, or we're conversations my time then, Mr. between Mr. the White House I'm going to move on to a new area. The, the Foreign Agents Registration Act, you're familiar with it? Right. You think it's good policy? I think it's a, a, a you, good law. It, you enforce it, correct? It has value, yes. In addition to Paul Manafort and Michael Flynn, have any other Trump campaign advisors or senior administration officials lobbied for foreign governments without disclosing it under the Foreign Agent Registrations Act? I'm not able to comment on that. And Why not? Repeat the question. Perhaps I misunderstood it. In addition to Paul Manafort and Michael Flynn, have any Trump campaign advisors or senior administration officials lobbied for foreign governments without disclosing it under the Foreign Agent Registration Act? That would be a matter that should be directed to Mr. Mueller, I believe. Uh, moving to a new question. On October 6th, the Department of Justice, actually you, on the behalf of the Department of Justice, issued a 25-page memo to all federal agencies purporting to provide guidance on religious liberty protections under federal law. In the guidance, you direct, you indicate that an exemption or accommodation for religious organizations from anti-discrimination law might be required even where Congress has not expressly exempted religious organizations. You remember that, right? Yes. Okay. Would that mean, under your interpretation, that an employee of FEMA could refuse to provide disaster assistance to an unmarried couple who live together based on the employee's religious belief that men and women should not cohabitate before marriage? I don't or believe not? that it could be interpreted that way. It's just would, a policy document. Would, we didn't try to write it. I, I really like well, to I just you have to answer. Would, would, this is a yes or no. Would the guidance you provide permit a HUD-funded shelter to refuse to house an unmarried pregnant woman based on the grant recipient's belief that sex outside of marriage is a sin? Every, yes or no? Every matter. Uh, first, I, I don't think so, number one, under the guidance, but also the guidance does not repeal established laws that are in place, and it was written, that guidance was to uh, clarify the established Th principles thank you, of Mr. religious Sessions. I have very freedom. limited time. I appreciate your answer. Well, now returning you. to the Papadopoulos issue. In your October 18th testimony, you purport to have forgotten this conversation about uh, by Mr. Papadopoulos about Russia that you put an end to. You said you weren't being dishonest, you weren't being making a false statement, you simply forgot it. You remember that testimony? Something like that. Okay. Yes. When did you remember the remarks of Mr. Papadopoulos? When, when did that memory come back to you? I think it was when it, the press came up with it, or some, it, it was revealed in the press. That was the first time you remembered it? Yes, uh, I would recall that my October uh, statements uh, was a, a broad question. No, I understand. Mr. And Sessions, that I have it, a limit. Uh, I'm reclaiming this event my time. Occurred you were a over, senior, Mr. Sessions, you were a it was senior over 18 campaign months official before. and a member of the national security team. Did you ever exchange any email, text message, or any other communication to or from Mr. Papadopoulos about Russia or any other subject? Repeat the category, the list of things? Exchange any email, text message, or any communication to or from Mr. Papadopoulos about any I, subject? I, I, I do not believe so. I'm confident. I, I, did any, I did not. Did anybody ever forward to you a communication from Mr. Papadopoulos? I don't recall it. 
Did anybody from the campaign ever communicate with you about Mr. Papadopoulos? I can't say that there were no conversations about him uh, before or after this event. Were you told about the contact? The time him, of the I gentleman think. has expired. The witness can answer the question. Um, Chair, I don't have a specific recollection, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'd ask to make a unanimous consent request. Uh, I would ask unanimous consent to insert the following materials into the record. A letter from me and Ranking Member Conyers requesting a hearing on the President's interference with antitrust enforcement manager for the Justice Department. A letter from Senators Amy Klobuchar, Diane Feinstein, and several others to the Justice Department urging it to oppose any attempt by the White House to interfere with antitrust laws, enforcement decisions, particularly for political reasons. A July article in the New York Times reporting that senior White House advisors have discussed using the AT&T Time Warner merger as a potential point of leverage over CNN. And nine letters from as far back as February of this year from various members of the Judiciary Committee seeking information on a wide range of subjects uh, addressed to the Attorney General of the United States that have been ignored, that we have received no response from. Yes. Ask Without objection, the document made part of the record. The chair recognized the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Radcliffe, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.